Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Welcome back. So you just heard the trailer for disc number 32 in the Italian collection series from 88 Films. This is Cold Blooded Beast, a.k.a. Slaughter Hotel. This one here, um, Giallo, from 1971, I believe. Uh, so we're kind of in the early, early stages of Giallo. And uh, yeah, this one is, I mean, it's kind of Giallo. We'll, we'll play into it. There's a gloved mass killer but that's really where the similarities stop this is exploitation and smut at its finest according to 88 films they see on their website a clinic for mentally unstable but wealthy women is being terrorized by a maniac with a fetish for medieval weaponry dr keller played by klaus kinski of x-ray and his team are clueless as to who's behind these brutal crimes is a member of staff or have one of the charges finally snapped and started to act out the perverse fantasies on their fellow inmates. From maverick filmmaker Fernando De Leo, uh, who directed Shoot First, Die Later, comes Cold Blooded Beasts, a.k.a. Slaughter Hotel, his one and only foray into the celebrated giallo genre, featuring some of Italian exploitation's finest beauties in Rosa Bala Neri, Cheryl Hume and Monica Strabel, Cold Bloody Beast is a sleazy delight for anyone with a passing interest in the seedier side of the genre. 88 Films are proud to present this film uncut and in HD for the first time in the UK. Special features on this disc were a high definition Blu-ray 1080p presentation of the film sourced from the original negative and fully uncensored. It had uncompressed English audio with subtitled German and Italian sections where the English audio doesn't exist. It had optional English subtitles, 
uh, had a little uh, interview with Rosabla Neri called Hot Blooded Rosabla uh, from 2017. There is an audio commentary by genre expert Nathaniel Thompson of MondoDigital.com. Uh, I switched the commentary on and off in bits, uh, mostly where things weren't happening. I will be attesting that the actual commentary on this one is fucking brilliant. Um, theatrical trailer. There is English opening and closing credits, a reversible sleeve. This was region unlocked, so you can watch it anywhere. Uh, the picture format is HD 1080p 235.1, and the audio format is LPCM Mono 2.0. Um, there is subtitles, and it does run just under an hour and 40. So, um, what did I make of this movie? So, yes, it is a jalo. It is a giallo in that there is a masked killer who's wearing a black trench, got a black hat and black gloves as he walks around stalking. And they are right, the weapon we're using this one, moving away from the straight razor, uh, or even just a knife, as you would expect in a, a giallo movie, moving into more kind of fun with the, the kind of medieval weaponry, which just happens to be in this house of mentally unstable people. As you do, you know, you give them weaponry. It's like that scene in... Um, in Friday the 13th part 5 where for some reason Vic the man with anger problems is just given this big fucking sharp axe to start chopping wood for no reason at all and nothing bad happened in that movie at all except he turned away some chocolate he turned away some chocolate no one died no one died not one not one you never saw it if you thought you saw it you never saw it hashtag Roy is my boy anyway getting back on the cold bloody beasts this is as generic a formula as you are likely to see. We kind of start with a what we'll class as a mentally unstable woman, although she seems to be fairly in control of her faculties, being driven to this facility to get better. Meanwhile, there is someone prowling the grounds, killing off uh, beautiful women uh, and, and various different methods. The big thing for me about this movie is how very blatant it pivots towards kind of softcore pornography and and full-blown nudity. And I know what you're thinking, what, softcore porn, Duncan? Really? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. There are women playing with their lady areas. That's right. She's come with lady area. He wants to see Fanny or Virginia. But yeah, there, there are, you know, there is double clicking of the mouse. There is a little Kit Kat shuffle, if you know what I mean. Uh, we men in boats are being played with. That's all I'm seeing in this movie. And the camera is not shying away. It's right in the middle of the screen. Just hairy vagine and a couple of fingers about it. Um, in more than one scene, which kind of shocked me. I thought maybe in one scene. I thought we'd get away with it. Now, I am no prude. Uh, I've already experienced some of this in this series thus far, specifically looking at some of those uh, Emmanuel Cannibal movies. You know what you did, Emmanuel Cannibal, uh, Cannibal movie. I'm looking right at you. Um, so I have seen some of this appear in Italian cinema. I've just never really seen it so blatant um, in a giallo. So, like, I can understand the Cannibal movie. It's tenuous. It's slap it on the back of, you know, an Emmanuel kind of, or the Dark Emmanuel, or Black Emmanuel, as we're calling them, uh, movies. I can kind of see where that's going, and I understand the purpose of that to an extent, but I've never seen it so blatantly wielded in a giallo. Um, and like I say, I'd loosely classify this one as a giallo. It has some of the elements for sure, but none of the mystery, uh, kind of mystique or background or the kind of, the, you know, person from a different country there. All the, all the things that you associate with the template that Argento specifies is not in here. Um, even the cinematography kind of is on the more kind of leery and softcore pornography. So there's a lot of kind of woozy dreamlike scenes done in that kind of soft light and focus sort of way. Um, and uh, we have Klaus Kinski really chewing scenery here. He looks amazing in this movie. This is Primo Kinski. This is 71. This guy has fucking a a jawline structure, cheekbones that models would kill for, and Kurt Cobain's hair. Uh, he really does look like a cross between, um, like, a Lon Cherry's uh, <laughs> fucking Phantom of the Opera uh, once he's been unmasked in Kurt Cobain um, from Circa Smells Like Teen Spirit. Uh, 
and he's not doing much in this movie actually this is a, a very subdued yet very intense role for him, very little lines he's mostly in the background as a red herring, as are most of the male characters in this movie are kind of set as, could they be the killer? No, maybe he's the killer, well he must be the killer and when the killer is revealed I mean, it's madness it really really is, it doesn't make any sense and I will give this movie huge props in one respect which will belie the grade that I actually give it this movie has a killer being revealed, um, or being caught, so to speak, only to escape, and then managing to make his way into a room filled with asleep patients, and then viciously murdering them all before he's stopped. And you see, this is like the last five minutes of this movie, this guy goes fucking raw and guts um, an entire room filled with young women before being stopped and, uh, and you know dispatched by the police. And we have never really seen done before. The end of these movies tend to be they're caught mid-kill, uh, or stopped just before their last kill, tracked down and, and, you know, and they die a horrible death. In this movie, they just fucking went for it. They were like, the body count's clearly not high, let's just have him go berserk. And that's what he does. And it was kind of shocking watching this for the first time and seeing that. I'd just never seen anything like that done before and I actually can't think of many movies I've really ever seen it done before ever where a killer right at the end just wipes out an entire room of people and then is put down you know not mid kill or anything like that is allowed to finish his, his kill spree before he's, he's finally shot and it kind of caught me by surprise um, the score in this movie is beautiful I absolutely loved it really really liked it want to own it and listen to it on repeat it was really really good but out with that you have a lot of kind of genre classic actresses really there for titillation and not necessarily not necessarily there for their acting prowess um, it is a generic giallo kind of set up um, and an an orthodox reveal to an extent but really this movie is here for titillation and titillation alone um, the kills are okay to an extent the the weapons used are probably won't make it a bit more interesting and the set of the movie is kind of cool as well being in this large mansion house um, in some you know kind of pristine open grounds I think that was kind of cool but out with it there's really not a lot to hang your hat on in this movie um, I'm I'm very kind of precious about the Jalo genre. I really do think that I can forgive a lot on the other side. So when things get so crazy that they don't make sense, or you know, plots start going in directions that are never really tied up, I can live with that because the journey is fun. The journey in this movie was just really boring. I'd like for its runtime, this movie feels a lot longer. And yes, you are trust me you go five minutes at a time before you see a stunning rack or you know a set of lady curtains if you know what I mean but it's not enough to really save this movie and I'd be honest this is the first Jalo I've seen in a while where like I can genuinely say I probably never watch this one again it's, it's ticked off the list uh, Fernando De Leo did a lot of other stuff and a lot of other genres but ultimately ended up doing porn and you can kind of see why here because those scenes are probably the best shot scenes of the entire movie um, and the rest just doesn't feel like it feels like they're, they've flung in a killer into a movie which could have been any other sort of exploitation movie of the 70s and this is the way they'll sell it by putting that in there and it just doesn't work for me overall like overall it was just kind of I don't know I just expected I expected more from it and just got a lot less than what we actually did here and it kind of let me down a little bit if I'm honest um, yeah I don't know I don't know there are plenty of other Jallos still to be covered in this series I'm really looking forward to getting to next week's one which I'll announce after the break because I know it has a bit of a pedigree about it which I am fully aware of but yeah ultimately when it comes to this movie I can't really give it any more than a two and a half out of five yeah, I, I loved aspects of it, but overall it's a, a fairly sort of tenuous Jalo movie that really wants to be kind of exploitation and smutty, and I'd much rather they went wholly down that route as opposed to the disjointed scenes that they've put in anyway. So yeah, a two and a half out of five for Cold Bloody Beast, aka Slaughter Hotel.